So the next talk is going to be on the complexity of dynamic epistemic logic. And this is by Guillaume Osher and Francois Chosentrigo. Francois is from Guillaume Osher is from Rennes and Francois is from Cachan at Brittany, but not Brittany Nichols. So good morning everybody. So today I'm going to talk about the complexity of dynamic epistemic logic. Um, it doesn't work. Maybe like this? No. Okay. I will change like this. So I will start with a little introduction. I will start with the state of art. So here is the, the well-known diagram of complexity. You can, for instance, uh, see in the book of Papa Dimitriou. Um, so what is known is, for instance, that uh, public announcement logic, um, the model checking is in P, and the satisfiability problem is, so if you take, for instance, the logic K, uh, it's the same, then the logic K is P space complete. Uh, we also know that um, if we add the star operator and the union to public announcement logic, we have uh, the satisfiability problem becomes undecidable. We also know that uh, dynamic epistemic logic plus um, the common knowledge operator is decidable, but there is nothing about the complexity. Uh, here we are going to... So the contribution here is uh, this one. So if we have dynamic epistemic logic plus the union in the language, the model checking becomes P space complete and uh, the satisfiability problem is next time complete. So we are going to see it today. So let's start uh, by a presentation of dynamic epistemic logic and then I will deal with the model checking and afterwards the satisfiability problem and then I will finish with a conclusion. So I will start with a static epistemic logic and then I will introduce even models, product updates and the dynamic epistemic language. So uh, the running example is as follows. So you have uh, here two agents and a guy here uh, where uh, there is a box and a ball inside. You know that there is a ball inside because this is the initial uh, world but the two agents uh, doesn't know anything so for them there are two possible worlds one where the ball is inside and one where the ball is not inside. And uh, we use so, uh, the traditional language, uh, epistemic logic, with the dynamic, uh, the, sorry, with the, the model operator here, A believes phi. So now I introduce even models. Uh, so as we have crypto structure for uh, epistemic logic. Here we introduce Kripke structure for talking about events. So we have a set of possible events and we have relation for each agent. Okay? And we have also a precondition function which for each possible event will um, map a precondition, so a formula here, which says the precondition of the event. So a small example, this is public announcement because we have only one uh, one possible event and all agents are uh, for them it's the only possible event okay here it's the public announcement here you see that the ball is inside the box here you have a more complicated example where the ball is only shown to agent one and agent two don't care doesn't care. So here, the possible event here, the current possible event has a precondition, is that the ball is inside, and it's possible for agent one, and for agent two, the unique possible event has a precondition which is true. Nothing happens. Okay? So now, we are going to uh, do update. So, here you have the initial situation where nobody knows anything about the, uh, the state of the ball, the location of the ball. We have this event and we want to talk about the final situation where agent 1 will definitively know uh, that the ball is inside but agent 2 uh, has, doesn't know. 
So uh, the update model uh, is defined as follows. So it's a synchronous product of the initial uh, epistemic model and the event model. As you see here, worlds of the updated model are pairs uh, from the initial model here and from the event model. Um, but pairs where th we have something like this, that is to say the precondition of the event is true in the possible world. And here, it's exactly the definition of a synchronous product. So two pairs are related if each component are related. And the valuation here is inherited from the initial model. And uh, concerning uh, pointed models, because when we describe a situation, we have a current situation. So the current situation will be the tuple, the, the pair, made up of the initial possible world and the initial, the current possible event here. Uh, and it's well defined if the precondition is true in the, in the current possible world. Here we have the example. So you remember huh, the initial uh, model. Here we have the event when the ball is only shown to agent one. And when we make the product, we obtain this. So as you see here, agent one, um, we'll, uh, we, uh, agent one knows that the ball is inside, but agent two doesn't know. For, for him, there are two possible worlds. Um, so the language we are going to deal here with is the following. So we have here the epistemic, uh, epistemic model logic and we add here a dynamic operator. Okay? And programs here, pi, are of, of this form. So I, either they are atomic and they are event models okay? or they are union of programs. And uh, so here it's read as a dynamic operator. Even the even pi, we have phi is true. And here you have the truth condition for um, an atomic program. So uh, this is true if when you make the product, if this product is well defined, then this product should uh, satisfy phi. And for your union, is, is standard. It's uh, this uh, truth condition. Okay, so now we are ready to tackle the model checking, okay? So, uh, first I will recall you the definition because, uh, as usual, and then I will explain, uh, show you a p-space procedure and then sp speak about harness. So, uh, the definition as an input, an epistemic model, a formula, and the output is yes if the model satisfy the formula and no otherwise. So, <clears throat> for a p-space procedure, I'm going to be a bit complicated. Is it okay for you? I will introduce here uh, more inputs. I will also have some, uh, a list here, a list of uh, event models. Is it okay for you? And the, the specification of this procedure is that when you make the product here, it's well defined, okay? And we have a formula phi, and we output yes if this product satisfies phi, and no otherwise, okay? So the initial problem is just when this list is empty. Hmm? Sorry? Ah, uh, it's bounded by the length of phi, huh? of the number of operators in phi. Because now we design this procedure here, takes an input phi, and we, as to additional, we make a pattern matching huh? on this formula. So proposition here, negation. But now let's treat the, the interesting cases. So uh, for uh, this operator, okay, we are going to check that uh, the product of this and this new model is well defined. So we check that the precondition is true, okay? If it's true, we are going to return exactly the result of this product plus the M prime W prime psi, 
and and that's all. And this is uh, you don't care. Okay, it's an error. Uh, no, it's not an error. It's when you when this is uh, not true. Okay. Now, uh, for the belief operator, um, we are going to browse all the tuple that are successors in the product. Okay? But of course, if we browse everybody, there are some tuples that are not well defined in the product. So we simply check that it's well defined. We start by u, u prime. Is it well defined? Okay, suppose that yes, we, 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 we check all the cases till the final cases here. And then, if psi is not true in this tuple, then of course this will not be true. Huh? And we return true if all those tests have been succeeded. So now, uh, this procedure uh, is indeed p space because. Um, <coughs> When we call the first call, okay, um, the number of nested recursive calls is bounded by this bound here. This bound is strictly decreasing when you, when you apply, when you uh, call, um, uh, when, you, when you make a call in the, in the procedure. And each call, so if you look at the, at the, the stack of the call, uh, for each call, you have to, to have memory for lo local variables, and this is polynomial. You just have to to the, the local variables. So now, why is it p-space hard? We embed, we are going to prove by reduction, and we embed quantified binary formula satisfiability problem into this model checking problem. Okay? So let's do it. We do like this. Let's take, so this is a little example. We, do we take a, such a formula, okay? For all P1, so for all value of P1, false or true, there exists a value of P, P2, false or true, so that for all value of P3, psi is true. We're going to translate this with this. What's this? Okay, I will explain you, don't worry. So, we are going to encode here a valuation, okay? Evaluation by a model like this, and uh, the value of PQ, PK, sorry, PK is there exists a path from the root here of length k. So here, P1 is true, P2 is not true, P3 is true, P4 is true. Okay. Now we show that, in fact, if we make the product, but I haven't drawn them because. Uh, it's B simulation invariant. So here, uh, there is absolutely no precondition. Huh? No precondition. So here we start with the model where all the propositions are false. So, okay, except P4, but we don't care about P4. And here, it, it means that if we have executed this program or this program, so if we put P1 or, P, or P1 to true or P1 to false, it should be true. And this, there should be a value for P2. Here, for all value of P3. And then here, we evaluate the formula psi, where here we say that P1 is exactly, there exists a path of length 1, P2 is exists the path of length 2, etc. So this is the reduction for proving that the model checking is P space hard. So now, let's have a look to the satisfiability problem, okay? So the same uh, roadmap, definition, procedure, and hardness. So definition, as an input we have a formula, and the output is yes, if the formula is satisfiable. Um, the procedure we have designed is a tableau method. So you, you can find the, the, the rule in the, in the paper. Here I will show you a little example. So let's start, uh, let's ask the question whether this formula is satisfiable. You are going to try to build a model for it, okay? Let's do it together. So it says that non box M, M prime one, W prime one, etc. 
So um, the announcement of this uh, should be possible. Okay. So if we make the product of this world here in construction with the event here, it should be well defined. Okay. So as it should be well defined, we're going to add this sign here to say it's well defined. And we say that this formula is true in this world when we make, so in this world with the product of this. Okay? So it's well defined, so we have to add the precondition. Let's add it. Then, um, as this should be true, the product should be possible here. Okay? And this formula should be true after the product of this and this, the product of this. So add the precondition for this. Uh, it's B2P here. Okay? And, uh, okay. And then, oh, sorry. Uh, then you have this formula that should be true. So we should add a world for agent 2. Okay? Let's do it. Where this formula should be true. And here, we have to choose, non-deterministically, successors in the model. So here, we have chosen the only possibility is W prime 1 for agent 2, and U prime 2 here, because we have an age from here to here. Okay? And the product should be possible also. So when we continue, we add preconditions, and etc. So, um, the, this tableau method, um, the arity here is bounded by the length of the formula. It's bounded by the number of diamonds, but okay, let's say the, number, the, the, the length of the formula. Um, the depth of the tree which is produced by this tableau method is bounded by the length of the formula. Huh? And, but something is really dangerous here. It's because here, in any world, so node of this tableau method, of, the, of a tableau, sorry, of a tableau, you have here an exponential number of terms we can write inside. Why? Because we can potentially have all the different tuples made up of events that appears in the formula. Okay? So what we have here, uh, is an exponential uh, structure, but it's not like K. You, you cannot transform it into a p-space procedure very quickly because here you have uh, an exponential number of terms into a, into a node. It's very difficult. You cannot, I, I, you cannot do it. Uh, you cannot do it. I don't know because p-space, I don't know whether it's equal to next time. But in any case, um, here um, you cannot do it, but this is exponential, and each step of the Tableau method will add something to the structure which is bounded by this. So the number of steps is exponential. So the time is exponential. And it's not non-deterministic because you have uh, rules that are non-deterministic. So let's start with, uh, st stop with this talk with uh, the next time harness. So we are going to embed a tiling problem into the satisfiability problem. A tiling which is known to be next time complete. So the tiling uh, is, the, 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 the problem is to tile uh, a square like this, okay, with some tiles here, uh, so that the color matches. Hmm? If you have a tile here, tile here, the color should match. And uh, so we reduce it to the satisfiability of, of dynamic epistemic logic. Uh, uh, in text, so it's a, a, a K here. So the, the size of the square is supposed to be a, a power of 2. Hmm? Because the input of k, the length of the input is log of k. The input is n, in fact, huh? the length of the input. Uh, so we have to, to tile a grid of 2 power n times 2 power n here. So this is the main idea. First, we are going to build a tree. Then, uh, of course, and we need a trick. It's a bit uh, 
spatial. And we need to encode uh, two non-constrained tilings in a tree. So one tiling and another one. Oh, the color doesn't match. We don't care first. This is the, the, the step number two. We just put tilings like this, okay? And then the third step is to say those tilings are equals, are equal, okay? Those tilings are equal and the color matches. Are you okay with this roadmap? So, uh, building a tree, it's quite okay with standard model logic. Huh? Uh, so we build a tree so that uh, all valuations of P0, P4, N minus 1 appears in the tree. Okay? So let's do it with this formula. So we, we have something like this. We have a formula which enforces the models of, a form of this formula to have all the valuations. And those valuations are interpreted like this to be locations in the tiling, in the two tilings. We have locations here in the first tiling and a location here in the second tiling. Okay? And we add extra proposition here to say which tiling types appears in the different locations, okay? Uh, how, how many times I have still? Okay, let's do it. So, uh, there is a problem. Because here we have uh, a leaf, here we have another leaf with the same, the same uh, position for the first tiling. But maybe they are not tiled with the same tile types the same tile type, okay? So what we are going to do is to enforce that they have the same tile types. And this, we have to select here all the leaves where the valuations here is the same over P0, P2K minus 1, which is devoted to encode the, the position of the first tiling. Huh? For all valuation, we have to select all the new leaves that satisfy the same proposition, they, they should satisfy the same proposition that encode the tile type. So this we do it with dynamic epistemic logic. We do it like this. With this event model, we select all the branches of the tree, okay, where P0 is true. With this, we select all branches where P0 is false. And you continue like this. And when you are here, at the end, you have selected all the branches that have the same valuation. And then you enforce that it's the same, it's the same tile that appears in all of them. And then, uh, finally, it's a bit, uh, 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 it's quite okay because we can do it with the only K formula. We have to enforce the equality of tilings and the constraints. So, if uh, so, you can say it uh, the equality of the locations. You can say it with Boolean formulas. Huh? Uh, if it's equal, then it's the same tiling. If it differs only by one in the here, so if you have tiles like this, the color should match up and down should be the same color. Okay, and here uh, it's the same with left, right. So left, right, for instance, here, you go at the end. If the coordinate differs only by one and the other is equal, then you have to encode the constraints of the color matching. And that's all. So the problem is next time complete. Uh, next time complete yes. So uh, this talk was about a contribution of the, com the complexity of dynamic epistemic logic. So we have proved in this talk that uh, model checking is P-space complete, then the satisfiability problem is next time complete. So some perspectives. So now we are like this. We have proved this. And uh, there are plenty things to do. Um, without union, 
I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm really sorry. Uh, of course, it's in PSpace because you can apply the same procedure, but I don't know whether it's PSpace complete. So this is shown by this, huh? by a little line. I don't know where it is located. And here also, I don't know. And uh, with the star for model checking, I don't know. With the union, I don't know, etc. So this is to do. Um, I haven't put it in the slide, but also uh, variants, S4, KT, I don't know, many variants of, uh, of course, uh, awareness, huh? like this morning, everything, I don't know, huh? many things to do. Um, okay, so thank you for your attention, and uh, okay, finish. In the model checking, if yes. I fix the nesting depth yes. of the modality, Yes. Uh, will I be able to get uh, a polytime algorithm? Um, yes, I think yes, because you can. If that's really where the uh, is. Wait, I think you can maybe use even a translation, no? To model logic K. Because the problem is when you translate, it's uh, exponentially, it uh, grows up. But if you. Um, uh, bound the model, uh, the, the death, uh, just for uh, yeah. dynamic operators. Huh? We, yeah. Yes, I think if you only bound for dynamic operators, then it becomes uh, polynomial because uh, you have this bound, you, may, you put the translation, okay, the exponential, so kind of exponential uh, is a constant, and then you have, I, I think, uh, to, to check, huh, but I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's polynomial. It's probably a similar remark would hold for satisfiability as well. Mm. Uh, yes, also, because this, for the same reason, because the translation will be polynomial, and you you put into a, uh, a SAT solver for standard model logic K. Yes. Your uh, proof essentially works because you can bound the size of the tableaus simply in terms of the formula that you give as input. If you consider stronger languages where you cannot do that, where you need some form of, of loop check, for example, if you add uh, satisfaction operators or... Or even S4, even S4. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And description logic constructs, for example. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe we can do something, but I, we haven't tried yet exactly. Uh, we tried a bit, but it's uh, okay. I, I cannot uh, say something. Sorry, I, I, I don't know. Um, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the translation works. No, translation to maybe you 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 you, you know if you have a formula like this and which we we use the translation. I I, I don't know. I, I don't know. For the complexity, I don't know. But uh, we, we, if it's bounded, we, we can translate. If the death is bounded, we can translate. Otherwise, I don't know. Thank you.